What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out the Sky Stars Eagle S221. It is a 221 millimeter FPV racer do-it-yourself kit and it comes in this box marked your present. So let's go ahead and open up the box and check it out. All right, so I got everything out of the box and what I did was I just dumped it out of the box because it seems like every single item comes in its own plastic bag. So very, very nice that they are not just shoved into the box. So everything came in its own plastic bag. The only thing that didn't come in a plastic bag is the Velcro strap for the battery and a couple of different styles of stickers that they provide you with. So what I'm gonna do is take them all out from their plastic bag, lay them out on a table so I can kind of see what I got. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, I got everything out of their individual bags. I left some of the screws and stuff inside of the bag still yet, so I don't lose them. So I got them laid out on the table just the way I'm going to put it together somewhat. And I did take some time out to check out the components online to see what they are and where all the wirings are going to go. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of the components. All right, so let's start off by taking a look at the motors here. The motors are the Sky Stars branded motors and they are the 2306, 2600 kV motors. And it's got the hollow shaft and there's some kind of metal alloy to fill in that hollow shaft. Open bottom bell design and looks like the motor wires are long enough <laughs> hopefully they are long enough and here's the vtx antenna and it is the right hand circular polarized pagoda 2 antenna with the mmcx connector and here we have the buzzer led light fixture and there's the soldering pads on it and we are also given this little wiring harness so this we need to solder on here but when you plug it into the flight controller, you just plug it in. And let me tell you, the flight controller does not need any soldering at all. All of the accessories, the components will just plug directly into it. So it's a plug and play type flight controller. And here is the VTX and the VTX is the EWRF E709TM3 Pro 48 channel, 25, 200 to 500 milliwatt switchable VTX. And I've seen this VTX before. It is uh, in my Sky Stars G730L, the seven inch uh, quadcopter, that monster quadcopter. It is the same one, I do believe. And there's that uh, single button to change the channels, the uh, bands and the power output. And it also supports TBS Smart Audio. So we are able to change all of that stuff via the OSD menu using your FPV goggles and your transmitter to do that. So it is really, really nice. And it did come with this wiring harness. It's got all of the wires intact, uh, the open ended on the other side, but in the kit, we are also given this one with harnesses on both sides. And this is the one that we're going to use. It has the uh, just the right amount of wiring already on it. So we got the signal as well as the um, TBS Smart Audio wire going into the flight controller. So all we need to do is just connect it, plug it in and plug it into the flight controller. No need soldering at all. So we don't need this wiring harness. So I'm going to put that on the side. Here's the ESCs, the 4-in-1, 40-amp, BLHally 32, D-Shot 1200 ESCs, and they are the UFO FPV ESCs. And at first, I thought it was going to go this way uh, with the XT60 cable coming out of the back, but that is not the case, guys. So this thing has the motor sequence, the ESCs already marked on the back. That's number two, and this will be motor number one. That'll be motor number three, and that'll be motor number four. So it's going to go in this way. So you're going to have the uh, battery cable coming off the side on this one. So hopefully that is the case. And I did take a look at the website of this quadcopter already built, and that is how it is looking like. So here's the uh, flight controller, and the flight controller is the Omnibus F4 uh, flight controller with Betaflight built-in OSD, capable of two to six S battery input and the target was the omnibus f4 sd target and it came with betaflight 3.3.3 pre-installed and check out the micro sd card slot right here for your black box data logging needs and check it out 
everything is plug and play ready to go and they are all marked so i got this harness already on here this is for the receiver whatever receiver that you're going to put uh, this one already has the s bus prepped over here and the middle harness connector is for the vtx and there's a t6 so we're going to be using the uart6 for the uh, tbs smart audio and here is the video in so that is for the fpv camera and this one is marked led and buzzer so this will be connecting to the buzzer so very easy connection and this will be connecting to the esc so very very nice and here's the fpv camera and it is the fpv camera yeah it is uh made by sky stars it is a one-third inch ccd camera 600 tv line 2.3 millimeter uh, lens 130 degree field of view fpv camera i've used one of these before so they do work great and we are provided with the wiring harness for that as well so everything is ready to go all i gotta do is solder in the motor wires the xt60 connector and the led buzzer light combo with the wiring harness and that is the only thing that i need to solder in so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and put together the frame itself so let me go ahead and show you the frame there you go so i'm going to go ahead and start building the frame and i'll be right back okay guys here's the frame all put together now and it is looking pretty nice it is the sandwich frame configuration and the arms are slightly curved in the front and straight in the back so it is a stretched x frame but i'm not sure what you call this front arm kind of warping in a little bit and i have to look at the product web page to figure out which way it warps in either it warps in or warps out so on the product page i can see that it is warping in and check out the bottom that is how it goes in. There's some uh, countersunk screws. There's four of them. And that goes in because the bottom plate is countersunk. And that is going to hold on to the nylon standoff. Goes right through. So there's three screws holding on to each of the arms here. And this one here has a bigger hole. So you put that round nut in there and screw it from the top. And the other one, you just put the regular nut or screw from the bottom and use the standoff to hold it tight so that is just about it and that would be the front because that is where you're going to put the fpv camera side plates right up in here and the top plate is going to go this way yep this is the way that the top plate is going to go so it is looking pretty nice i'm pretty sure that is two millimeter thick top plate as well so what I'm going to do now is, since I already have the nylon standoff to receive the ESCs, and the ESCs are going to go directly on here just like that. And then you're going to put uh, some more nylon standoffs and put the flight controller and nylon standoff and then the, the VTX on top of it. And then you're going to screw it down. So just like that. So the XT60 cable, the battery cable is going to come out on the left rear arm i'm gonna zip tie it to the left rear arm i kind of like it coming out of the right rear arm because i'm a right-handed person and i grab it and i plug in the battery but this is fine i can plug in the battery this way as well so next up what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and start uh, soldering on the motors to the escs and tightening it up uh to the arms and we just have two motor screws to worry about holding onto the motor arms and i thought that was a negative but you know what the sky stars stx 225 build uh did just fine with just two motor screws so i'm not really worried about that so let's go ahead and start soldering on the motors to the escs all right so i just got done screwing the motors on to the arms and i noticed something here you see how the motor wires are coming off the motor slightly slanted to the arms it does that even in the rear arms the straight arm as well as the arms in the front as well so i guess the reason why is because they have the arms so narrow that the motor actually has to kind of turn a little bit in order for the screws to go in so therefore the motor wires are not coming off directly straight in line with the arm it is coming a little bit crooked 
and you can see a little bit of that coming off from the bottom all around so the attention to detail is not there on this one i'd rather have it coming straight out but it doesn't really make a big difference unless you're going to hit something like a branch or something like right here that could cause some problems uh, other than that i think it will work fine as long as i tape it down and put a little zip tie on here so you're not going to notice it that much but yeah if you hit a tree limb or something directly on this side of the motor where the wires are coming out you will kind of damage where the motor wires are attached to the motor all right just got done soldering on all of the motor wires to the esc and also tape the motor wires uh, with electric tape to the arms so it is looking a little bit better but nevertheless it is sticking out and it is an eyesore to me anyways and also uh, soldered on the xt60 connector as well i kind of lost that little gray piece that's supposed to cap off the xt60 connector somewhere here in the garage i'll find it sometime later it's got a pretty long battery cable so i'm just going to wrap it around and zip tie it to the hind legs so we got lots of wiggle room over here now i also soldered on the wiring harness to the buzzer led light fixture so this is ready to go so the only thing that is left that i need to solder on is the receiver and i'll do that a little bit later on so everything else is plug and play so let's go and put everything together okay so so far what i have done is i installed the flight controller and it is nice that it already came with these anti-vibration mounts so you just push it in and also connected the wiring harness to the esc and ran it in between the esc and the flight controller and it is coming out and connected to the flight controller as well and also i attached the led light fixture buzzer combo with a zip tie on each side to the rear standoff and connected it to the flight controller so next up we're going to do the vtx okay so here we are i got the vtx the wiring harness already connected and to the middle port and also i put some more standoffs uh ready to go so all i gotta do is just slap on the vtx and shove it in and just put a little screw on the top to hold the vtx down and the vtx is in all right so we are almost getting there i got the fpv camera mounted and i can see why they are calling this the eagle because the the side plate that holds the fpv camera kind of shaped like the eagle's head yep and i also have the pagoda 2 antenna connected to the vtx via the mmcx connector and i'm kind of dry testing it out here so the top plate is going to go on just like that so the antenna needs to come out through one of these holes here in the middle so it also just kind of slides in as well so you're going to have to kind of twist the coax and have it come out through the back somewhat somewhat like that so it's going to go in and i'm going to zip tie it so it doesn't move around and that is just about it that is how it's going to go on so i'm just going to go ahead and secure the top plate down and we should be good to go all right so we are just about done we got the top plate mounted down via some of these golden screws that we were provided so it is looking pretty nice and i've also zip tied the pagoda antenna to the top plate also zip tied the battery cable to the hind legs and also added a little bit more electric tape to hold down the motor wires all around so it is looking pretty nice check it out so this will be considered the pnp version of this quadcopter now because uh, all we need to do is add our own receiver bind it to our transmitter and configure it in beta flight and we should be good to go so i just gotta put the uh velcro strap for the battery and put a non-slip pad and we were given this tiny little non-slip pad for the battery which i'm not going to use i'm just going to provide my own foam pad and go from there so we got a couple of extra screws here the small little screws for the fpv camera so we are given two more screws so that is really nice and we also have a four motor mounting screws left over as well so that is always welcome because there's only two screws holding on to each of the motors so very nice of them to give us extra screws and also we have this 
uh, wiring harness for the VTX, which we didn't need because we were provided with a wiring harness in the kit as well. So all I got to do now is look for a receiver so I can solder on the receiver, bind it to the transmitter and configure it in beta flight so we can go for a little test flight. So let me go and look for a receiver. All right, I found an XM Plus receiver, and what I've done to it is I put a uh, three-wire servo connector on it, so I'm going to go ahead and flash the XM Plus receiver with the latest firmware, so I'll have RSSI value readout, so turning on Welcome my Tyrannus QX7, warning. Switch warning. and I've already set up a model Eagle S221. I'm going to long hold the menu button, and it'll take me into the radio setup page over and scroll down to firmware i've already loaded up the firmware from uh, the fr sky website and i got the xm plus with the 16 ch uh, channel 16 and also on the channel 8 so i'm going to choose the channel 16 plug it in and flash external device yes and there we go, flashing in progress. All right, flashing complete. So we are done. So let's go ahead and solder on the receiver to the flight controller. All right, we are back. I got the receiver soldered onto those three wires on the flight controller. I haven't positioned yet because I want to go ahead and do the binding process. So what you want to do is on the receiver, there's a little bind button right over here. So you want to hold that bind button down and power up the quadcopter at the same time. It'll put the receiver in a binding mode and we're going to go ahead and hit the bind on the transmitter. So I'm going to turn on my transmitter. Welcome to open TX. Throttle warning. Already. warning. All kinds of warnings. Um, got the model already set up. I'm going to go ahead and, oops. I'm going to go ahead and page up and scroll up. And I'm going to go to that bind key right there, the bind button. Get ready to press that bind button. And this, you need three hands or maybe four. But somehow you're going to have to manage. Get the power ready to go and get your little finger nail on that little bind button even though the bind button is such a small little button you can feel it being depressed so just get it and there you go oops there we go okay you will see a red light and a green light up here on the receiver and at which time, I'm going to go ahead and hit that bind on the transmitter. And the red light should flash. And you are done. Let go of the power. And exit out. And then if you power it back up, only the green light will come on for a successful bind. Okay, it is kind of too close to the transmitter probably. And there you go. Just the solid green light is on for a successful bind. All right. So here we are in beta flight. So let me go ahead and connect my USB cable to the computer. There we go. And what you want to do in here is calibrate the accelerometer. But I've already done it. So it is nice and level, preferably with your quadcopter on a flat level surface. Now, this is my second time in here with this quadcopter. The first time around, I did do all of my configuration to make sure they are correct. So here we go into the ports tab. And I did not change anything in the ports tab. This was by default selected to Serial RX on UART1. And TBS Smart Audio was selected for the peripherals on UART6 by default. So just leave this alone and go into the config tab where I have selected DSHOT 600 for myself and motor stop turned off. By default, set to 4.5 idle speed. Now, when I checked the motor directions after I got it all set up in BL Hali 32, uh, motor number two was spinning 
the correct way and all of the other motors were spinning outward. So what I did was I just reversed the motor direction on motor number two and selected the motor direction is reversed on beta flight here. I clicked that, it's yellow. So now all of my motors are spinning outwards instead of inwards. So just gotta remember to put your props on so that it spins outwards away from the FPV camera. All right, and there's a board alignment selected here, 180 degree roll degree by default. So just leave that alone, that is correct. And by default, it is set to eight kilohertz and two kilohertz for gyro and PID loop frequency. Uh, accelerometer is turned on. Barometer and magnetometer was turned on, but I turned them off. And arming is set to 180 degrees instead of the 25 by default. And I did type in the Eagle S221 for craft name. And the receiver was already selected to serial based receiver and S bus was already selected. And I think telemetry was turned on, so I just turned that off. Uh, LED strip is turned on, OSD is turned on, as well as the anti-gravity and dynamic filter by default. So that is all I did in here. So let's go on over to power and battery. All I did in here was uh, select uh, the minimum cell voltage to 3.1 and warning cell voltage to 3.1. And fail save, I have it to stage 2 uh, to drop. And on the throttle, I have set to hold. On the PID tuning, uh, it already came with these PID values already by default out of the box. So I'm just going to fly it with these default PIDs. However, I did put my rates on here. So we're going to check it out with these PIDs and then check it out with Betaflight default PIDs as well. And in the receiver tab, let me go ahead and turn on my transmitter and power up the quadcopter because the receiver doesn't power up without being plugged in. There we go. So I got it set to TAER1234 because it was set to AETR1234 by default. And I've selected AUX12 for my RSSI channel because channel 16 is auxiliary 12. And let's see if all of my stuff works. My pitch, my roll. So in here, you wanna make sure that everything is correct. And my yaw, my switches, auxiliary two switch, arming switch, and my buzzer switch. They are all working, all right? So that is all set up. And in the modes tab, so I got my arming on aux one all the way to the top of the switch angle mode on aux 2 on the bottom of the switch and beeper on aux 3 at the top of the switch and air mode on aux 2 at the top of the switch and in the OSD I have RSSI main battery voltage timer 2 fly mode craft name and warnings and average cell voltage and I got the Video format set to auto, and some of my post-flight statistics are selected as well. And that is everything that I have done in beta flight. All right, so everything is just about done, and it is almost ready to fly, minus the props. I got the XM Plus receiver, double-sided sticky tape to one of the arms on the VTX. Now, there's this big voided area on the VTX and I see this photo where the receiver is just kind of free floating on there but how do you secure it down like that I would much rather have the VTX maybe uh, without this voided area just leave that area nice and flat so without any circuitry so you can double side sticky tape the receiver right on there but I got it just on one of the arms and it, it feels like it's holding pretty tight there. And I have the receiver antennas coming out the rear arms on a zip tie. And that seems to be working out really, really nicely for me. And I also have a foam pad to protect the battery on the bottom of the clock up there. And I did install my Velcro strap. So let's go ahead and see if everything is working. Mm. 
All right, so let me turn on my transmitter. To open TX. Throttle warning. Okay, power up the quadcopter. All right, let's check it out. Arming. All right. Okay, why is it so soft? Because I still have that little piece of paper on the buzzer apparatus. Okay, let's take that off and see if it improves a little bit. There you go. And let's see the modes. All right, everything is working just fine. So what we're gonna do is test out the VTX and make sure everything is working on the VTX. All right, so I got a little monitor all set up and I got a box. The only one that I could find was the Emacs Hawk 5 box. So that is a cool looking box. So let's go into the features and change out the channel on Smart Audio. Right now it is set to F1 at 25 milliwatts 5740 so let's change the channel to channel 2 and set it confirm and there you go smart audio working so let's see if i can go back to the channel there you go nice everything is working just fine 30 i'm gonna go up and change the power to 500 Set it, confirm it. Now I am set to F1 seconds. 5740 at 500 milliwatts. All right, so let's quickly measure in how much this thing weighs in, ready to fly without the battery. And it is just coming in at 311 grams. All right, so the bi-bladed props that came with the kit is now installed. And as you can see, the front arms are just wide enough. And there is maybe just about a couple of millimeters separating these 5152 bi-bladed props. So I will be testing it out with these props and see how they perform. And perhaps some um, tri-bladed props can be tested out at the same time as well. But uh, that would be for another video. So stay tuned for that flight test video of this quadcopter. So we will be concluding this build video of the Sky Stars Eagle S221 do-it-yourself kit. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we shall see you again next time.